Good evening, Grace Baptist Church, anyone who may be watching. For our devotional today, I'm going to read from Psalm chapter 34, verse 8. Hear the word of the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. In scripture, to taste many times is used metaphorically uh, as a way of saying to experience, which, which makes sense to us, right? When we eat something, we're experiencing it. We're experiencing the flavor, the texture, its aroma. In this psalm, as David thanks the Lord for his protection and deliverance, we see in verse 8 that out of gratitude and thankfulness for what the Lord has done for him, he encourages those who may not know the Lord intimately, to taste and see just how good he is, to experience the Lord for themselves so that they too can enjoy his love and his grace, so that they can enjoy the, the peace and joy that can only be found in him, so that they can for themselves learn to trust him and find refuge in him. But how? How can we taste that the Lord is good? How can we experience his grace and love and goodness for ourselves as David encourages others to do by reading his word. The Lord reveals himself to us through his word. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 5 and in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 3, we see that those who have been saved and those who are maturing in the faith, both of those things happen because they have tasted the word of God and they are continually exposed to it. Those of us who are believers we know that we are saved because at one point in our lives, we heard the gospel. Someone preached the word of God to us and they explained the good news of Jesus Christ. And then the Lord used that word and he saved us. He, he granted us faith that leads to repentance. Or maybe it wasn't through a sermon. Maybe you read it, but still you read the word of God and you read the gospel and the Lord used his word to save you. In either case, we are saved because we were exposed to the word of God and the good news of Jesus Christ, and we believed. That was our first taste of the Lord, our first experience with him. And those of us who are watching this that are saved, you know that in that moment we saw just how good he is because we saw the grace that he shows us in his son <coughs> and, and the love that he showed us through Jesus, and, and we experienced that salvation. We know that we are secure and saved in Christ. But the word is also how we continue to taste the goodness of the Lord. It's how we continue to experience his grace and peace and joy. As we read scripture, the Bible, and we meditate on it, we learn more about who God is. And once we know him, that's how we can begin to trust him. Again, notice here in, in, in verse 8 that David writes that those who take refuge or those who trust in the Lord are blessed. As we learn more about who the Lord is by reading and meditating on his word, we begin to learn that he is God and he is, he is worthy of our trust. And the Spirit takes the word and it applies it to our hearts so that we can begin to grow in love and trust for him. Here's some examples of this. It's by reading the word that we learn that God is the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We learn that about him. We then can believe that about him as we're asking the Spirit to apply his word to our lives. And then once we learn that and believe that about him, we can begin to trust that God can actually comfort us because he is the God of all comfort. He is the Father of mercy. The the word then becomes real for us and we can trust God to, to make his word real in our life and we can trust that about him. We can find refuge in him. Or it's by reading the word that we learn that the Lord can bless us with the peace that surpasses understanding and that he can guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 7. We learn that about him through reading the word. We believe it about him through the power of the spirit. And then we learn to trust him with our hearts and our minds. We, we begin to believe that we don't have to be anxious, but that he can help us in our anxieties because he can grant us a peace that surpasses understanding. It's by reading the word that we learn that nothing can hurt us because we are secure in Christ. And by hurt, I mean spiritually and, and, and eternally, 
We may be able to be killed, but we will never be hurt because we are secure in Jesus. Our salvation is certain in him because of what he has done for us on the cross. Luke 10 verse 19. Or that in Jesus we are more than conquerors. Romans 8 verse 37. We could go on and on and on. But it's by reading the word or listening to the word that we learn who the Lord is. It's by reading or listening to the word that we learn that he's one who fights for us, that he remembers us, or that he loves us. Or as we see in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 17, that he loves us so much that he sings over us. But brothers and sisters, for us to delight in all of these truths and, and then grow in our love and trust for the Lord, we have to know them first. And the way we know them is by reading his word. And the more we read it, the sweeter it will become to us. Just as we see in Psalm 119. How sweet are your words to my taste? Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And so let's make sure that we carve out time to read the word so that we all can taste over and over for ourselves and together as a church that the Lord indeed is good. And as we learn more and more about who he is, let's, let's ask the Spirit to apply his word to our hearts, to use it to shape us so that we can begin to grow in our trust of him and, 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 and confide in him and find refuge in him. If you're watching this and you're not a Christian, then please know that by believing the gospel, you can be saved. You've heard me mention the word a lot. In John chapter 1, we see that Jesus is the living incarnate word of God. And that he was with God from before uh, creation, from eternity past. And then the word came and dwelt amongst us. Jesus came and lived a perfect life. He never sinned. And yet being without sin, he died on the cross for the sins of everyone who would believe in him. And then three days later, the Lord raised him from the grave and he conquered sin and death and now he sits at the right hand of God. If you believe that gospel, the Lord can save you. And and in that moment when the Lord saves you and his spirit dwells in you, you will see that the Lord is good. You will understand that you are a sinner but that you are now saved by grace and grace alone. And so I pray if you don't know the Lord that you believe the gospel today and you call on him and along with us believers in the church universal, you too can taste his goodness. Blessings to you.